I ain't never asked y'all for anything. But I need your help with this. There's almost 7 million people that follow me. Somebody's got to know something. My son was murdered. He was shot. And I want you to look at my son. Look at my son. You're, you're putting all of your faith, hope, and trust in, into these people in the police department. And you have to just sit back and just hope and pray that they do what needs to be done. Ophelia Nicholas is known as Mama Tot on TikTok. Her popular channel is nothing but positivity, peace, and life advice. But when her 18-year-old son, Randon, was unalived in June 2022, she used her channel to get all the attention she could. That way, she hoped someone would come forward with information, or at least Randon's killer could see the damage he had done. Before long, answers were found and a suspect was arrested. Reuben Gully, in prison today because of Ophelia's TikTok or Alabama law enforcement. And why did Randon lose his life that night? Is his death connected to a deeper problem in the United States? This is the full story of Randon Lee and Ophelia Nichols. In the last days of June 2022, Mama Tot posted a new video on her TikTok account. Mama Tot's 7 million fans expected another positive message, inspiring peace and love. But this time, her video was shockingly different. I ain't never asked y'all for anything, but I need your help with this. There's almost 7 million people that follow me. Somebody's gotta know something. On the evening of June 24th, law enforcement in Mobile, Alabama contacted Mama Tot, real name Ophelia Nichols, with tragic news. Her youngest son had just lost his life. My son was murdered. He was shot. And I want you to look at my son. Look at my son. Ophelia appealed to her audience. She wanted everyone to get a good look at the young, innocent boy whose life had just been taken. It was a senseless act, and Ophelia was desperate as she did not know what exactly had happened. Moreover, she was outraged at the thought that her son's killer was still out there, possibly putting other lives in danger. They're out there, living and breathing. When my son is dead. Mama Tot's TikTok was not only meant to emphasize the tragedy that she was going through, Ophelia was hoping that with millions of people watching it, someone is bound to know something about what happened, especially since most of her followers also lived in Alabama. Somebody knows who did this to my child, and I'm asking for somebody's help. Anybody's help. Please. <laughs> Please. Well, look at you. You done made it a whole nother year, honey. It's 2024. And you might have fought with yourself a whole hell of a lot of times last year, but you're not gonna do that this year. These are the kinds of videos Mama Top posts on her TikTok on a daily basis. Um, but anyway, go watch the podcast, okay? She encouraged her followers to see the silver lining in difficult situations, to leave toxic environments, and to grow into mature, healthy, happy people. She also gushed over her family from time to time. One of her loved ones was her son, Randon Lee. And here's my youngest. Y'all, that's my baby child right there. Randon was getting ready for his 19th birthday party on June 25th, 2022. Just one day before his birthday, though, his mother was visited by authorities with the worst kind of news. On June 24th, Randon drove out to a gas station in Pritchard, a suburban area of Mobile, to meet someone. Someone had gotten into his car, fired at him, and then left. Randon managed to drive to another gas station across the road where he collapsed. When paramedics arrived at the scene, it was a minute too late. Brandon had lost a lot of blood and could not be revived. Law enforcement assured Ophelia they would do whatever was in their power to catch the culprit and make sure he didn't walk the streets again. But like most people following true crime cases, Ophelia knew the wheels of justice moved slowly. She also knew that if she was unlucky enough, the detectives might never catch her son's killer. Sometimes there's not enough DNA evidence or CCTV footage to track down another suspect. Sometimes cases simply go cold 
So Ophelia decided to put her large fan base to good use. After releasing her heartfelt TikTok, Ophelia gained attention throughout the United States. That's when Fox News contacted her for an interview. It was there that she explained why she wanted her followers to know what had happened. People talk. People talk. So I wanted that video to be seen because if the person who did this to my son could see what he did to our family, he took my son from me. It's my son. You're, you're putting all of your faith, hope, and trust in, into these people in the police department. And you have to just sit back and just hope and pray that they do what needs to be done. So Ophelia was hoping that one of her 7 million followers would have a relevant piece of information. Or at the very least, she was hoping the culprit would watch the video and feel an ounce of regret. You see other people go through stuff like this and it never crosses your mind that that would one day be you. To have an individual make the choice to take your child from you. He had a choice. They had a choice. And they chose to take my son from me. Within the first days of the investigation, Pritchard Law Enforcement discovered CCTV footage from the gas station where Randon's life was taken. Watch the guy running around a gas pump and then jumping in a car, you can clearly see a gun in his hand. Now, this is the moment right after Lee was shot inside his car at that Pritchard gas station. So the detectives knew they were looking for the guy in the red hoodie. They also had his black car caught on surveillance footage. In the unedited footage, which has not been released to the public, the culprit is seen arriving first and parking at a gas pump. One minute later, Randon arrives in a silver car and parks at the opposite gas pump. That's when the man in the red hoodie jumps out of his car, gets into Randon's car, and pulls the trigger. Within seconds, he makes it back into his car, weapon in hand, and darts away. Randon is also seen driving away. Sadly, he only makes it to the gas station across the road, where he crashes and passes away. By the end of June, the Mobile County Sheriff had a press conference detailing all the authorities knew so far. Black vehicle got inside the uh, victim's vehicle. We know there was one shot. The suspect got out of the victim's vehicle with a handgun and got back in his black vehicle and took off. There was another vital clue. Uh, we do know at this time that <clears throat> Mr. Lee had made his way down to Wilmer and was selling narcotics to these two individuals. Indeed, Randon had met up with the culprit and his associate to sell them weed. It's unknown how they came in contact with each other or how many times they had met in the past. There was narcotics found in the vehicle whenever the crime scene unit processed the scene. Uh, at this time, we do have a couple of suspects in mind but at this time, we are not uh, releasing any information. As it goes with most pending investigations, the sheriff did not release the names of the suspects until they had one in custody. It's a tricky time. You have to release as many clues as possible, just in case the public has relevant information. But you have to leave out whatever clues might actually impede arresting someone. During the Q&A phase, the sheriff revealed that this was not Randon's first time selling to people. Uh, we do know at this time that uh, Mr. Lee did have a relationship as far as um, selling to different individuals. It just wasn't them two individuals. Uh, we do know on multiple towns that he was selling and uh, these two individuals has bought from him in the past. So even though he was only 18, Randon had a pretty dangerous way of making quick cash. Unfortunately, he put his trust in dealing to two men who had no intention of paying that night. As this case was gaining nationwide traction due to Ophelia's big fan base, the sheriff was also asked if they were prioritizing this case over others. He assured the public they were not. This homicide is not more important than any homicide we've had in the city of Pritchard or actually anywhere. Uh, I realize that Miss Nichols has a TikTok following, which is great, and all those followers could help by calling in if they have any information. Uh, any slight, you know, minuscule, you know, information that we get, you know, is good to follow up on. It may lead to nothing, however, you know, it may lead to something, you know, as well. Uh, we just ask, you know, that, you know, any information that you have that you think you might have, call in, you can talk to me and uh, 
you know, they were relay that information. Throughout the summer of 2022, authorities pieced together information and Randon's family took to the internet, pleading for anyone with any relevant information to phone local law enforcement. His family also went out to celebrate his 19th birthday in his absence. My kids and their cousins and his girlfriend and friends, they all went out to eat and celebrated his birthday with a birthday cake. However, Ophelia confessed she couldn't do that, not so soon after losing Randon. I can't because I just, I just really couldn't see, you know, happy birthday, Randon. <laughs> so I just walked outside and I talked to the sky and I told my son, happy birthday. But she made one thing clear, until a suspect would be in custody, there would be no closure for Ophelia. My family, my family needs this. I, I can't move on. My children can't move on. His girlfriend can't move on unless we know that the person that took my son is not walking the streets. This person is in our town. In August, there was a new conference held by Pritchard Law Enforcement. According to the chief, they had found their suspects, but were waiting for the evidence to be processed in order to file the charges against them. We have done everything that the district, attorney asked, the district attorney's office have asked us to do. And everything been turned over to the district attorney's office. Now the ball is in their court. And that's what I'm gonna say about that. In mid-August, almost two months after Randon died, there was a breakthrough. A 20-year-old man turned himself in, confessing to taking Randon's life. The mother of a teenager murdered in June speaks out after her son's suspected killer was arrested. 20-year-old Reuben Gully turned himself into Pritchard Police late yesterday afternoon. Mama Tot, whose real name is Ophelia Nichols, says she's grateful for the arrest, but now two families are in pain. It's unclear whether Gully turned himself in because the mounting evidence against him was inevitable, or because the pressures of Mama Tot's TikTok were finally getting to him. Was there something on his conscience? Or did he realize there was nowhere to run and turning himself in looked better to the judge than trying to flee the state and getting arrested? Today, a judge ruled there is enough evidence to send the murder case surrounding the son of a TikTok influencer to trial. Yes, during today's preliminary hearing, Judge Spiro, Spiro Kyrgyz said he is sick and tired of seeing drug-related homicides in Mobile. WKRG also revealed that one of the crucial bits of evidence involved a phone call between Randon and Gully just minutes before Randon lost his life. We learned today that Gully made a phone call to Lee two minutes before Lee was and killed. Details of the phone call weren't, dis weren't discussed today during the hearing. According to a Pritchard detective who testified at the hearing, he spoke to Lee's girlfriend and says Lee would buy drugs from Goli previously and was planning to buy that night of the Well, according to law enforcement, it was the other way around. To Mama Tot's shock and disbelief, Goli pleaded not guilty. This meant that the case would go to a grand jury. But then how does his defense attorney explain his decision to turn himself in? Yes, so I asked Gully's attorney why, and his attorney tells me that if you have charges against you and you have you have two choices, one, you can just go ahead and turn yourself in, or two, you can go ahead and run away from justice. And he, his attorney tells me that someone who is not guilty is not going to run away from justice. So was all this a play? A decision Gully made with his attorney before turning himself in so as to look innocent? Or did he watch Mama Todd's TikTok video and make an impulsive, guilt-based decision? As it turns out, this was far from Gully's first run-in with the law. In fact, he had been arrested several times before and denied bond in two previous cases. Yes, he was denied bond previously for two charges unrelated from this case. One charge that was uh, possession of marijuana and the other possession of a controlled substance. He was denied bond a third time as he awaits trial. Meanwhile, Randon's family is still trying to cope with the unimaginable hole left by the tragedy. Randon's father, Ronnie, who was incredibly close to him, spoke to Fox News. Mama's got to live with this, and all of them's got to be, they're all going to be suffering from it. The whole, my side of the family is, and his side of the family, and everything, and Ronnie highlighted the same things as the judge. Randon was not the first teenager to lose his life in a narcotics deal in Alabama, not by a long shot. It's just, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of these kids killing each other out here. Why do these guys have such easy access to firearms? 
And why do innocent kids get roped up in dangerous lifestyles? Why do any kids end up thugs? To Ronnie, there can be no justice in this case. What is justice? You got a dead son, a grandson, and a woman's gonna lose her son going to prison. And some more people too, whoever's in that, whoever was in that car, all should be punished the same way. Missing like his birthday, his mom was missing him, but I know he's with my brother now. So that's what helps me get by. As Randon Lee's tragic story traveled fast through TikTok and other news outlets, an NGO in the Pritchard community decided to honor him with a memorial. Saturday, a local nonprofit, Wall of Love, put up a memorial in honor of TikTok star Ophelia Nichols' son, Randon Lee. This is not only a wall designed to remember Randon, but it's filled with goods for those in need hygiene products, non-perishable food, and clothing. Mama Tot spoke about why it's important to give back to the community. If it's a ponytail holder, a hairbrush, um, a clean pair of socks, never be ashamed. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in certain positions that we didn't think we'd ever be in in our life. Ophelia said Randon was a kind, generous person, exactly the kind of person to organize such a wall. So I know that he's probably looking down thinking, that's my mama. As Reuben Gully is still awaiting trial as of January 2024, Mama Tot continues to post positive messages on TikTok. She now has over 12 million followers. Today, she shares the tragedy of her son's death as a way to encourage people to stay away from their clinics. I'm a mama that buried a child. I know sometimes parents, we think our parents is telling us no to something to be mean. They just don't want us to have a life. But I'm telling you that sometimes, a lot of the times, we say no to things because we know what the outcome will be. Let Randon's tragic story be a reminder to stay safe and surround yourself with kind people. And let us hope that no other teenager will have to suffer such a brutal, senseless ending like Randon Lee. Hey, thanks for watching. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know similar stories? Let me know in a comment. And before you go, make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time.